behalf of honorable members and in my own name, I wish to extend our deep condolences to the bereaved families of the victims of the unprecedented floods which struck the capital on Saturday last. I also wish to extend our sympathy to the families who have suffered losses as a result thereof. May I now invite honorable members to stand in silence for one minute as a mark of respect to their memory of the departed. Établir les faits entourant les événements du week-end dernier à Port-Louis et en tant que pays s'assurer que les conséquences de telles catastrophes naturelles soient mitigées afin de protéger autant que possible la vie et les biens des citoyens. Propos du Premier ministre ce matin à l'Assemblée nationale, le docteur Navin Ramgoulam a répondu à la private notice question du leader de l'opposition Alain Ganou. Le chef du gouvernement a indiqué que de telles catastrophes se multiplient dans le monde. Il a indiqué qu'une équipe d'experts de Singapour et de la Grande-Bretagne va revoir toutes les stratégies pour faire face aux inondations. Jack Dishchatou. La private notice question du leader de l'opposition, Alan Ganou, adressée au Premier ministre, le docteur Navin Amboulam, a été consacrée aux grosses pluies qui se sont abattues sur Port-Lui samedi dernier. Whether, in regard to the heavy rainfalls and flash floods which occurred on Saturday the 30th of March this year in Portris, resulting in the death of 12 persons, you will, A, for the benefit of the House, obtain information from the meteorological services, the reasons it did not issue any weather bulletin, to inform the public of the eventual risk of heavy rainfalls and consequential floods, as was the case in Royal Island. Two, the Commission of Police, as to the measures taken, if any, to assist the public and to restrict access to the capital during the floods. And state, when at that time and under whose chairman, uh, chairpersonship the Disaster Management Committee met thereafter, to the urgent measures government proposed to take with regard to the inhabitants of Canal Dayou, and free the remedial measures taken, if any, regarding the drain system in Portlis after the floods of the 13th February 2030. Le Premier ministre, le docteur Navin Amgoulam, a eu d'abord une pensée spéciale pour les familles des victimes. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is with the deepest feelings of sadness that before replying to the private notice question of the leader of the opposition, I rise to reiterate my government's and my own sincere sympathies and those of the House to the bereaved families of the 11 citizens who have departed in tragic circumstances. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have in fact seen with my own eyes and with much pain the havoc and the misery inflicted on our citizens and our country by the natural disaster caused by the flash flood of uh, Saturday the 30th of March 2013. Mr. Speaker, sir, this solemn moment is not one for sheer recriminations as the recriminations will neither bring back to life the 11 citizens who have been victims nor comfort to the collateral victims nor should we display wisdom after the event. Rather, we need to establish the facts as they are in other country and show that the consequences of such natural disasters are mitigated, thereby protecting to the best of our ability, life and property. Mr. Speaker, I wish to emphasize that anyone who has checked the web recently would surely have seen the vast amount of scientific literature and ongoing studies on the subject of forecasting and minimizing the dire consequences of the natural phenomenon of flash floods. The facts and figures concerning the quantity, intensity, and suddenness of the Saturday last heavy rains no doubt testify to the fact that we are indeed the victim of flash floods on that day. Such floods have hit a large number of countries in the past. China in 1990 and 2000, where one million people lost their lives in the United Kingdom in November 2000, in the United States in 2005, where thousands of people lost their lives in New Orleans, in 2012, following the passage of Cyclone Sandy in New York, in 2007, Sudan, in Sudan, they had flash floods, 
in 2009, the metro of Manila, more than 100 people died. Thousands of residents were homeless. Municipalities were submerged with water for several weeks. In 2011, in the Philippines, 1,200 people were killed. And in Russia last year, 172 killed in flash flood, which struck at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there's a long list, now, Mr. Speaker, so I don't want to go through the list. But just to say that this is a, a, a phenomenon that we have to accept. Mr. Speaker, sir, these also testify to the fact that these flash floods are still posing formidable pro problems to the scientific community, including the World Meteorological Organization. No clear scientific answers or solutions have yet been developed by the scientific community. Mr. Speaker, sir, in regard to part A1 of the question, the meteorological services detected a zone of instability since Thursday, the 28th of March, 2013, in the morning, which would affect Mauritius during the weekend. This situation, the med services predicted, would coincide with the jet stream, thus intensifying the instability. But it was difficult, according to them, to predict the timing and the precise location of the incident. On Saturday, the 30th of March, 2013, at 0430 hours, the med services predicted the persistence of unstable atmospheric conditions with heavy showers on the central plateau in the east and south. However, in the early afternoon, a sudden outbreak of heavy showers caused massive local flooding in, the, in a limited area. It should be pointed out, Mr. Speaker, sir, that Meteo Réunion went in vigilance in its bulletin on Saturday, 30th of March, 2013, at 6.56 hours, when the island was already under the influence of heavy rains. With regard to the warning issued by La Réunion, I wish to point out that in the absence of scientific facts and figures, Pertaining to the issue of warning, the comparison between our meteorological services, what they did, and what La Réunion Meteorological Services did, may be unsafe at this point in time, Mr. Speaker, sir. I wish to share with the House information on the timing and intensity of the rainfall in Port Louis region on that particular day. At between 11.30 and 12.00 hours, there was 1.4 millimeter of rain. Between 12.00 to 12.30 hours, there was 0.4 millimeter of rain. Between 12.30 and 13.00 hours, there was 0.4 millimeter of rain again. Between 13.00 hours and 13.30 hours, there were 8 millimeter of rain. Between 13.30 and 14.00 hours, that figure turned to be 37 millimeters of rain. Between 14.00 to 14.30 hours, it was 50 millimeter. Between 14.30 and 15.00 hours, it was 41.4 millimeters, and between 15.00 hours to 15.30 hours, it came down to 2.2 millimeters of rain. It is to be noted, Mr. Speaker, sir, that 15 millimeters of rain fell in just six minutes, that is, between 14.12 and 14.18 hours. Mr. Speaker, sir, these are the hard facts, and gives the light to those who are still in a denial mode uh, to the impact of climate change. The House will surely appreciate that even in the most advanced countries with the most sophisticated equipment, it is not possible to predict such events precisely. With regard to part A2 of the question, I'm informed by the Commissioner of Police that as from 13.35 hours on Saturday the 30th of March 2013, Inspector Matar of the Traffic Branch and the Police Press Office intervened on the Radio Plus, Top FM and NBC and warned the public to be cautious on the roads because of the heavy rainfall, particularly in Port Louis. The same message was broadcast on the NBC in Bochbury by Police Constable Jagru Traffic Branch. During these live broadcasts, road users were warned to be very cautious and were strongly advised to avoid using the road in Port Louis. Furthermore, as from 13, 14 hours, the officer in charge of the traffic branch directed police riders who were already on duty on the motorway to deploy at strategic points on the motorway, that is the New Trunk Road, Immigration, <coughs> Place Dome, Codon Roundabout, on the M1 and Bell Village, La Butte, Grand River Northwest, and on A1, with instructions to regulate and direct traffic in view of the growing accumulation of water on the motorway from the mountain slopes from Pai to the central post office. Later, these riders were informed by their other colleagues. The divisional commander of the Metropolitan Division personally took charge of the situation and reinforced personnel on the ground to regulate traffic, assist members of the public who were trapped in the vehicles and water, 
and occupants whose houses were flooded, in particular at Canal d'Ayou, Pai, Trentebor, Chaussée Street, Poudrière Street, Place d'Homme, Codon, amongst others. As at 15.00 hours, three teams from the SSU were deployed, one at Harbour Front Building, one at Canal d'Ayou, and one at Camp Chaplon, to provide assistance to road users and other members of the public. As of 15.30 hours, the National Coast Guard deployed as follows. A team of divers at Codon and Portus Waterfront underpasses, and another team was deployed at underground parking at Harbour Front Building to look for missing persons. And four boats with crew in the general areas of Codon Waterfront, Place Dom and Pudilla Street, to rescue members of the public who were stranded in water and trapped inside their vehicles. As from 15.30 hours, the SMF was deployed for the following task, to rescue members of the public trapped in the vehicles or in waters at Codon and the surrounding areas, to search for missing persons mentioned in the two underpasses and in the underground parking at Harbour Front Building, to rescue people who were stranded on the rooftops of the houses at Canal Dayu. The serious wounded casualties were evacuated by helicopter to the SSIN hospital, to evacuate 116 elderly persons who were trapped at James Betty David Recreational Center at Pointe du Sable. As regards traffic diversion, the traffic branch put in place the following diversion scheme. Vehicular traffic on M1 northbound was diverted to the level of Otto Pombel village and Konda runabout towards La Butte and the north. Vehicular traffic on M1 southbound was diverted towards the south through the city center. Vehicles on the M1 northbound intending to return to the south were channeled on Otto Pont of Belle Village <coughs> and Ganga Lane. The police have through radio also informed the public to avoid transiting to Port Louis and instead to use alternate routes such as via Nouvelle Découverte. Mr. Speaker, sir, regard to part B1 of the question, as the House is aware, even though the meteorological services did not issue any warning for torrential rail conditions, a special crisis committee of the National Disaster and Operations Coordination Committee was convened under the chairmanship of the Commissioner of Police and comprised as he under, acting commander of, officer of the Special Mobile Force, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, and other senior officials. The committee met at 15.39 hours at the Abercrombie Barracks Special Mobile Force. Given the urgency of the prevailing situation, I am advised by the Commissioner of Police that all available personnel and units from the police, including the SMF, the SSU, the National Coast Guard, and the Traffic Branch, were already deployed in the affected areas. The Special Crisis Committee organized, directed, and monitored all police deployment and operations island-wise, in particular in Port Louis. Mr. Speaker, in regard to Part B2 of the question, I wish to inform that urgent clearing and dredging of the river Canal Dayu have started on the very next day, that is the 31st of March. It is also proposed to construct new embankments with an enlarged capacity of Canal Dayu, for which consultants have already started survey works as from today. For the inhabitants of Canal Dayu, the clearing of the mud, the debris, the damaged household materials is being executed as from the 31st of March 2013. Government, Mr. Speaker, sir, will also rehabilitate all damaged roads, drains, and other infrastructures for which an assessment is being carried out. In regard to Part B3 of the question, I would like to inform the House that following flooding on the 13th of February 2013, work orders have been issued for cleaning and dredging of a number of canals, natural drains, namely Canal Angli, Canal Bissun, Canal Dayu, Canal Kishi, Rivière Latanier, reconstruction of Bagua Bridge. Works have also already started on a major drain project at Batri Cassé and Sofia Lane, as well as City La Cure. The works order in respect of these emergency works involve an amount of around 80 million rupees. It must be pointed out that over and above these emergency interventions, the yearly program of the work of the NDU provides for a series of other works, including roads, drains, and amenities upgrading. The service of consulting firms have been enlisted for the medium and long-term solutions as soon as the program of work is generated. Works order will be issued accordingly. Mr. Speaker, I wish to inform the House that from 2005 to 2013, my government spent a total of 3.7 billion rupees in the construction of drains and bridges. Mr. Speaker, sir, with regard to those who unfortunately lost their lives, the House will no doubt know that as per existing legal provisions, a judicial inquiry into the cause of each death will necessarily be carried out. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, a number of people and private companies have expressed their spontaneous willingness to make financial contribution to the relief efforts underway. 
I have requested that all such donations be channeled through the Prime Minister's relief fund to those afflicted by those calamities. I have already initiated action to have a team of experts comprising of engineers and natural disaster management specialists from Singapore and the UK to review the overall strategy of dealing with flooding and minimizing. If you want to listen, you listen. If you don't want to get out. Order. Twelve people. I say order. Twelve. Order. Eleven. Eleven. Order. Eleven people have lost the love and look at the attitude, Mr. Speaker. Sir. You're worse than the maggots. Listen to the answer if you want to listen. If you want to listen, okay. Don't listen. Well, I say order now. I want some order, please. Honourable Prime Minister, you finish? Finish? Yes, please. Carry on. I say I want some order. Yes, Honourable Prime Minister. Honourable, Honourable Bagwan and Honourable Mohamed. Yes. Yes, carry on, Prime Minister. Some order. Honorable Osen. Honorable Osen and Honorable Bagwan. I don't want Honorable Members to be provocative. Okay, carry on, Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to assure the House the government will spare no efforts to ensure the safety of the Mauritian nation. Mr. Speaker, sir, the House and the nation will not remain insensitive to this spontaneous elan de solidarité and patriotism displayed by private citizens and organizations. I wish to pay tribute to them as well as to all the emergency rescue services who have been working day in, day out to save lives and to assist in the rehabilitation works. Is he aware that in fact on last Saturday, the day, the fateful day, our Met services issued a weather bulletin at 11.30 a.m. during the day and the content was as follows. Plutôt nuageux, avec des averses par moment plus fréquentes à l'est, au sud et sur le plateau central. Whereas the Met Services of Reunion Island issued a bulletin on the eve, on the Friday, and in the evening, and the contents of which were as follows: une alerte, vigilance, forte pluie, and forecast heavy downpour. And enjoining the public in Reunion Island to reorganise vos sorties pendant le week-end et que les conditions seront mauvaises. What the Honourable Leader of the Opposition doesn't say, that Reunion Island was affected before Mauritius. First of all, on Friday, the 29th of uh, March, in the morning, at uh, 6.47, this is what La Réunion Météo says. Au lever du jour, seules quelques averses menacent encore les hauts de Sainte-Rose et le flanc sud du volcan. Cependant, le, le ciel est aussi nuageux sur les hauts de l'est et du sud, ainsi que sur les plaines de la et la région de Salazie. Plus à l'ouest, le soleil est au rendez-vous. Le soleil est au rendez-vous. Au fil des heures, les classiques nuages de pente s'invitent sur les reliefs. Sur les reliefs. Cet après-midi, les nuages développés dans l'intérieur matinée s'étalent et se multiplient. La couverture nuageuse concerne alors la majeure partie du ciel, des hauts et la grisaille dominée. In other words, Mr. Speaker, sir. What they're saying in the morning, everything was fine, except some, some clouds. But in the evening on Friday, the same day that is, at 19.00 hours, then they come to say that the situation general is assez uh, flux de sud-est modéré, assez fort humide. Les régions de sud, sud-est, est sont en vigilance de forte pluie. In other words, what I'm saying, Reno Island uh, was affected first. On Friday morning, they, had, they said the soleil was, was a rendezvous. It's only in the evening when it started that they issued that. What, what, when you mentioned Saturday, Royal Island was fully under that uh, torrential rain at the time. Wouldn't the Prime Minister agree with me that in fact our Met services, the fundamental problem is that we don't have a sensitive radar equipment? Let me remind the leader of the opposition, the radar was practically broken down by 2000. 
the runner that we had. And then it failed completely. It could not be used from 2002 onwards. Now, you were in government in 2000. Yes. I say order. Well, allow the Prime Minister to answer the question. You know what? You don't want to listen. You don't want to listen. I'm saying the facts. I'm saying the facts. Listen. But listen to me. I'm saying the facts. They don't want to listen because it hurts. Look, I say order. You must subject, agree. You please. Must agree. I am on my feet. And I want Honorable to listen to what I'm going to say. Honorable Mia. Honorable Bagwan, the, please listen. The subject matter of today is a very important. It's very important. I want this subject matter to be debated in the proper atmosphere and proper climate. You're right to say, Mr. Speaker, and I appeal to the Honorable to the opposition, this is a matter of tragic consequences. We have to look at the facts instead of trying the blame game. I must tell the Honourable Leader of the Opposition that I have a report here from the Director of Memedeo who says that even I asked him the question point blank and he said even if he had a radar, in that case it would not have helped. They could not predict precisely that there will be such a heavy uh, downfall, a flash flood in significant, in, in certain areas. This, this, they say, they cannot predict. It is the considered opinion of the Mauritian public that the police were completely upset during the material. They failed. They failed to put to use their resources, their manpower, their techniques, and they have, as they should have done according to standing orders 134. 134 of the standing orders of the police. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honourable uh, Prime Minister has confirmed what I'm saying. It was only at 3 29 that the disaster committee meet, met in Vakwa. The Honourable Minister, Prime Minister has just said that. 3 29 when, when la deuxième course had été déjà renvoyée à 1h20, 1h30, le champ de mort était déjà venu à lac à 1h30. Therefore, could the Honourable Prime Minister tell us why not the police, the SSU, the SMF, the police information room, which is the nerve center, circulate diffuse information, broadcast messages through the police press. Why not the quick reaction group dispatch, uh, was dispatched to provide assistance to the passengers, to the passengers who, were who were trapped in the car? The why didn't the police go to Canal Dayo to provide assistance to inhabitants may I, may by I, way of helicopters? The, the honorable leader of the opposition is, put is putting too many questions at the same time. Wait a minute. Well. May I be allowed to speak? Then I want some silence. Because if too many questions are put at the same time, all the questions may not be answered. According to the standing orders, a question at a time, please. As soon as the problem started, the commissioner of police started acting. But we had to get the people of the national committee to, to meet. But in the meantime, what did they do? Going in a meeting instead of doing what they should be doing on the road, this is what they did. This is what they did. He called for the meeting, but at the same time, he started deploying his forces. He cannot go and wait and meet in a, in a committee room and then start deploying. He acted immediately. And if you, if you see and purpose gave you the times, everything was done. The precise time. It's all done. And then they met. In the meantime, they had to do what they had to do. The, uh, the police helicopter was used and saved their life. And saved their life. Silence. This is, uh, the, these Silence are as if they would, they could have driven. This is, I explained from the very beginning, Mr. Speaker, sir. I explained from the very beginning. I gave the list. Let me go through it again if, if the honorable members would want to listen to it because they don't want to listen. They just want to score points. They don't, they don't want to look at the, they don't want to look at the facts. I say silence. I just said that before I gave the times, the precise times, you must, you must agree to what the facts are. These, I gave the exact times, Mr. Speaker, sir. At, uh, at uh, 12 00 to 13 00, 00 hours. If you take both together, each, each hour, each half hour, there was only 0 0.4 millimeter of rain. There was no heavy rain at that time. It only started at 13 00 hours. It came up to 8 millimeters and then it about the surge. 
So at the time, the police has to act at the time. Not then they will say, let's go and meet any, uh, the disaster committee. They will meet the disaster committee. did meet continuously. But at the beginning when the problem rose, the police had a duty, and this is what they did. They acted immediately. Regarding these uh, victims, I listened to the radio as from 1.30. Every 15 minutes, SOS were being sent through the radio, and the police did not intervene. The police, in failing also to block the access of Port Louis on that day after 1 o'clock, also uh, contributed to the deterioration of the situation on that day in Port Louis. I do not agree with what the Honourable Leader of the Opposition has said. In fact, I commend the police, and I think they need to mend yourself. In the circumstances, Mr. Speaker, sir, let's look at the circumstances. I have said as soon as this problem arose, of course, they sent. I, 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 I mentioned, in fact, and there were very able police officers, I must say, who were on the ground and who acted promptly. So you cannot say and blame the police for, for the flash flood now, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Regarding the Disaster Management Committee, now the Commissioner of Police is chairing this, and, uh, and the SECCAB is no more the chairman of this committee. Now, does the Honourable Prime Minister know also that in this report produced uh, by Mr. Jo Duma, the, this, uh, Justice Do Mr. Justice Duma said, suggested the creation of a dis National Disaster Man Management Committee by way of an act of Parliament for taking charge of the responsibility to manage natural, natural disasters in Mauritius, to be governed by a board and to be chaired by the Secretary of Cabinet with a permanent staff. This is what he said, Mr. Speaker. We saw what uh, Judge Duma said. In fact, we are looking at the whole matter. At one point, we'll have to bring, we'll probably, I say probably, probably, we're not sure whether we will have to bring in legislation, but probably we will have to. And that is how we will proceed, Mr. Speaker. Sir. I put it to the Honourable Prime Minister that, in fact, in the region of Codan, central Port Louis, in fact, we remember these floods where PPS, Mrs. Bola herself, was, had a lot of difficulties. Is it, isn't it true? that in fact nothing has been undertaken by the RDA, by the Ministry of Public Utilities in that region, Mr. Speaker, sir, especially, 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 Mr. Speaker, sir, allow the leader of the opposition especially the design of the drainage system in the newly constructed roads of M1 motorway at the entrance of Port Louis and the ring road. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish, I wish the leader, honourable leader of the opposition puts a question. I wish the opposition will allow me to answer the question. Now, let's, let us look at this. First of all, we all know, Mr. Speaker, not just in this country, in New York, this has happened. In the United States, this has in the UK, this has happened. Now, listen, I hope, I hope, I hope you have the decency to listen. I hope you have the decency to listen, and then you react. Now, we all know this is a new... This is, this is new. This is not new, Mr. Speaker, that constructions have been happening. I've been saying it myself. We've been saying that we have to make sure. That is one of the reasons we, en we ensure that the Honorable uh, Minister for Local Government can see how permits are given and all those things. Let me just remind the House, Mr. Speaker, sir. Let me just remind the House. In uh, 1992, the Ruisseau du Pousse and Canal, and the canal along the Poudrilla Street, which are the main water outlet in this region, were already over flooded before reaching the Jardin de Compagnie. The excess water found its way to the lowest point. Normally, that's what it does, that is Place Dom. It is important to note that through an act of parliament, the Pus Stream Authorized Construction Act of 1992, under the prime ministership of Sir Anirudh Jagnat, <laughs> permission, permission was given. Uh, I was given. You're asking about that. But this is, Silence, this is the fact. This is the fact. This is the fact. This is the fact. Honor, I will answer the Honor question. Honorable Balamuji. Listen what they did, Mr. Speaker. Sir. I want some silence. Listen what they did. I Listen want some silence in this house. This is what they did. Permission was granted to Rogers and Company Limited to cover the push stream for the construction. This is what they did. No, I'm not blaming them. This is what they did at the time. So I say silence. Say. Yes, on a point of order. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, sir, from the sitting position, Honorable, Honorable Sudan, 
was insisting I was responsible. At that time, I was not the Minister of Public Infrastructure. I was a Minister of Commerce and Shipping. Silence. In Port Louis, in years 1989, 87, there was 195 mm, 200 mm, plus à cette époque. Il n'avait jamais eu des inondations comme il y a eu maintenant. I put it to the Prime Minister, in fact, one of the contributing factors to what happened. I am going to interrupt the horrible leader of the opposition. I have been lenient in allowing you to make certain statements. <laughs> Silence! But this is question time. Please, put your question. Is, is the, thank you, Mr. Sri. Is the Prime Minister aware that one of the pivotal elements that led to the floodings in the Coda area was the obstruction of Rousseau du Pouce by certain contractors Order. Who, who are constructing La, la Troisième Voie under the supervision of RDA. I just mentioned the Pouce was constructed when it was allowed to be covered by an act of parliament. And I remind the, the honorable leader, he was the attorney general at the time in government. <laughs> now, 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 listen. Now listen, it is absolutely, you see, it's easy to, to, become, to, to, to become experts now. That is why I want a, a team to have a look at everything, whatever was wrong. But look at this, Mr. Speaker, sir. I have a picture here of Wiso at the time. This is not what Express put. Look at the picture. Where do you see the flooding? There was no flooding there, Mr. Speaker, sir. No, at the, at the time, there's everything there. If you don't want to see, you don't see. With four glasses, you don't see. But this is the fact, Mr. Speaker, sir. So what the Honourable Leader of the Silence. is saying is absolutely not true. And also, when he mentioned in the, whatever, 90s or 80s or whatever, there were so many. There was no flat floods then, Mr. Speaker, sir. That is, the, that is the issue. Time is over. Time is over. I said, listen. I said time is over. <laughs> Members, time is over. I said time is over. Order! Order! I say order. <laughs>